Mark here with Successful Contractor and in today's episode this will be the one of five. Luke and I recently took a trip down to Florida to meet with Josh Glover who is Mr. Fence of Florida and if you don't know who Mr. Fence of Florida is you've been hiding under a rock. Um, they're part of a larger organization called the Mr. Fence and there's one now in Florida and the initial one was in Evansville, Indiana. Anyhow, we'll be talking with Josh on how he took his company from zero to three million dollars in a little over a year. How he started off in his home office and then eventually was able to move to a regular office. Um, what he did to get started, um, some of the challenges, uh, organization, the processes. One of the things Mr. Fence does really good is um, make processes for everything and that really helped them scale. And So we'll go over some of those processes and how they use those processes to scale their new location. In some subsequent episodes, what we'll talk about is how he scaled that, how he ran his office, what his yard looked like, um, some of the challenges that he had. Um, and we'll do a tour of his initial operation. And then some exciting things happened for him where he was able to purchase a building and we were there for his grand opening in the new building. So all that coming up, there's going to be a total of five episodes because there's a lot of information and we can't quite cover it all in the first one. But coming up, we'll talk with Josh on how he got his business started in Florida. I'm Mark Olson. Luke Gibson and I have a combined 50 years in construction as fence contractors. In that time, we have both experienced failures and success. We travel the country talking with other contractors who share their experiences in hopes that their stories can make you a more successful contractor. We're here with Josh Glover in Panama City Beach. So Josh, uh, just less than two years ago, it's actually about a, a year ago. Yeah, this 18 month. months. I mean, you were down here working, uh, but didn't really start a company until a year ago. We started a company in June, first week of June, yeah. last year. So we're we're coming to see basically how how it's grown and talk to him about the struggles of growing a new business because our primary location is up in Evansville, Indiana, which is a long ways away from here. It was definitely a big step starting from scratch. <laughs> the plan that we had in the beginning on how we were going to start it and what we were going to do and everything else rapidly dissolves <laughs> as soon as we usually got here. does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had several different options in front of us. One of them, of course, was to pack up and go back to Indiana, and that's nothing that anybody in our ownership group was interested in, me, Sean, nor Adam. So uh, we hit the ground running with. Uh, bunch of used equipment. Uh, a couple pieces of equipment broke down on the way here. Uh, one of them we had to have towed here. And uh, we started with a lay down yard in the middle of nowhere, off the road. We never had companies come there. But to give everybody a little bit of background, the, the idea was to buy a fence company that was already in operation down here. Yeah, so and we we'd made an agreement to purchase a fence company that was here. Um, once we got here, uh, we, we basically kind of ran that company for about two weeks. And then when it finally came time to close and us to take over control of the company, um, the owners of that other company ch changed some things that we'd agreed on in the original, original aspect of it. Um, the biggest thing was that company had agreed to guarantee the accounts receivable. And then when we get to closing, they said, oh, by the way, we can't guarantee the accounts receivable. So, uh, that made that deal no longer feasible. So we just decided that we were already here. There was a need for a professional fence company in this area. So we uh, set up a shop. Uh, we started installing our, our first projects within three days. Uh, I had to learn a lot about Google and Facebook and advertising and things like that. And the Starting this company the way we did has really been a huge experiment because you know, when you think of a, a typical company, over the years, you think of a company with a respectable location, no office frontage and stuff like that. Those are the companies that typically do in excess of a million dollars. Our focus was on um, employees, building and entertaining talented employees and uh, equipment, having the right equipment and the right trucks and the right stuff to do the jobs, as opposed to how people normally start a business where they invest all the money into the location and, and things like that. The reason we were able to do that is because it was a spinoff of Mr. Fence in Indiana and we had the, the Mr. Fence name and, and the advertising things that Sean had built over the years that really helped push 
prices for it. You already had a portfolio, so you yeah. could show thousands of jobs that were done and customer yeah. satisfaction. So you already had that going for you. So you're running pretty lean right now. You, the office is still in, in your house, right? Yeah, it's still in our house. We are in the process of moving to a new location. We just bought an office. It's going to be a change for all of us because our salesman, our media manager, my wife, which is administrative assistant, myself, we've all worked from home. Adam, who's one of the uh, co-owners of the company, he does all of our accounts receivables, accounts payable. He actually works remotely from Indiana. Yeah. So this entire company has been built uh, with no centralized office and COVID ready. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> COVID did not affect us. Didn't affect us either at, at yeah. all. So if anything, I mean, it did affect us, but it was a positive effect. Yeah. So that being said, um, we, we've learned a lot of things what not to do. If I was to start a fence company somewhere else again, which eventually I have every intention of doing, uh, there's a lot of things I would do different. Uh, first and foremost, I would start advertising in that area with a portfolio of projects and things before, before we even sent not even the salesman there. So, right. There's a lot of ways you could do it that would be more efficient that we learned um, through trial and error to the fire. But long story short, we uh, started in June. We did over a million dollars in fence installations by December 31st. And we hit over $2 million uh, in April of this year in our first year of work. So we are expected to be a 2.4 to $3 million fence company by within, the end within of this a year. year. Yeah. yeah. We, we've already cleared the, the $2 million in April. So uh, I haven't looked at QuickBooks in a few days, but right now, respectively, we're probably around somewhere around 2.5. Um, so in, in a year, in a year, we built go from a zero to two and a half dollar yeah. gross fence company. Now makes three or three and a half a year. Yeah. Next year look pretty, pretty reasonable. Yeah, so it's, it's basically model um, the same as Mr. Fence in Indiana. So that was another thing that made it easier for us because we weren't built from scratch. Which is uh, Sean and I had this idea that. Mr. Fitz in Indiana was kind of a big fish in a little pond, and if we took that big fish and put it into a bigger pond, then it would it would do even better. So yeah, it has. We're going to continue to do that, continue to grow. We, we're interviewing people for our new office staff. Um, hopefully, we get that opened up. We're going to go by there sometime today. Yeah, I'd like to take guys by there and check that out. Uh, but we're going to go by my house. You can check out our our makeshift office that we threw together. So keep in mind that you know. We had a plan, we had offices, we had professional locations set up when we were gonna purchase that company. And whenever that deal fell apart, we started from scratch. We ended up with the company phone at my house. We didn't have a desk or computers. We, yep. we bought a used desk off of Facebook and uh, a cheap desk for my wife off of Amazon. You know, trying to save money. So uh, the Florida market's notoriously tight. Prices are notoriously low and stuff like that. How have you been able to survive that? We don't compete on price. So if you compete on price and you're trying to build a reputable professional company, you'll lose every time. So we set ourselves aside through um, our warranties, the work that we do, the quality of work that we do, the materials that we use, and <clears throat> we try to find the right customer that fits our company. We've had conversations internally in the company to where just because we go out on you know, 25 leads a week, not every one of those are our customer, and they'll never be our type of customer because you're yeah, not looking for the person that's they bargain just want shop. The cheapest yeah. fence. So there's a lot of that in Panama City because a lot of it is commercially owned rental properties, and if it's a rental property, those people don't care. They just want the cheapest fence they can get put up there, so they meet code or regulations and. Uh, that way they can start turning a profit again. They don't care if they got to replace it in three to four years. It doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, that really hasn't been a market for us. What has been a market for us are, are customers that want a good product and have invested in their own homes and things like that. So we, we try to steer the conversation to that and we focus on quality and uh, the fact that we stand behind our work and that that sets us aside from our competition in one way. 
the other way we set ourselves aside from most of the competition in this area is all of our competitors uh, sell their fence based on linear foot pricing. Uh, and they hire subcontractors to come in and build their fence for three to four dollars a foot, something like that. Uh, which works out great for them on small projects like 50 to 100 foot because we can't compete with those. You know, if they're paying somebody three dollars a foot to come put up 75 foot of fence, then we're not going to be able to send one of our production trucks and a three man crew out there to do that and be competitive. Yeah, then you're engaged in the race to the bottom. Uh, so, what it's done is it's a uh, it's kind of separated us to where we get all of the larger projects. On the larger projects, we are actually lower than everybody else because they're still trying to do that same per foot, which gets out of hand once you get uh, over 200 foot, basically. Anywhere from 100 to 200 foot, you're running a business the right way, as I like to call it, versus mm -hmm. just trying to use other people's numbers. Running the business the right way will set you aside from your competition. So you're costing your jobs based yeah. on uh, your fixed overhead, all the variables, cost of your materials, what yeah. you guys cost you for the day, yeah, we use a instead set, of just a set price per foot. Yeah, if you the price question. per foot is silly because most fences aren't sold for foot, are per foot for one, and two, can't justify labor in that because we pay people hourly, and if it's a 100 foot job regardless, or if it's a 100 foot job or it's a 150 or 180 foot job, if you send a three-man crew out there, you're paying them for a day's labor. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. You can't them. do anything else that day. Yeah. yeah. They come back to the shop. They got like an hour or two left. You're, you're not. You're, you're not, not going to do else. another fence job. Yeah. You see that question on the, the forums and stuff on Facebook all the time. Like, how much should I be charging a foot? There's so many variables. That's the worst way to be looking at things. And what you're telling us is what Luke and I already know, but a lot of people don't understand is is that. You'll kill yourself on the small job because you won't make enough. And on the big jobs, you price yourself out of the market because you're not looking at what the true costs are. Your mobilization costs, what it costs you to get to the job, doesn't change just because there's 775 feet there or there's 2,000 feet. The mob costs are the same every day. So every day you go to the job, you still got to pay those mob costs. And if you don't build that in, if you don't think about that lost productivity time, you're losing. It takes fuel to start the engine. So every day, no matter what, when you wake up, you've got you've got expenses that you've got to cover. And if you're just going to go build a hundred feet of fence for whatever it is, three or four dollars a foot, you haven't uh, haven't covered your expenses. I had this little old lady. We were we actually finished a project for yesterday. But when I went out there and talked to her, she wanted to break it up in stages because she doesn't she wants to sign a contract and be obligated to do the rest of the fence. She was like, can I just pay this and you come do this part of the fence and then come back and do this part and then come back and do this fence. I was like, no, I can't. It adds another grand for yeah. each little, yeah. yeah you're going to pay like you know, $1,200 more just for us to come out here three times because it's it's an hour to load up in the shop and uh, get to the job site every day and then an hour back and you multiply that times three people and now you're 12 man hours a day. Um, and you do that three times, like 36 man hours a it's pretty much the whole project. We could have built a 200 foot wood fence um, for 22 sections in case Sean's listening. <laughs> uh, and, and had it done in no time. But that's that's another thing we do that sets us aside is we don't, we don't sell anything per foot because we don't buy it per foot, we buy it per section. So if, you, if you're selling eight foot section and you've got 66 feet of fence and you sell it to the customer at 66 foot, based on whatever your numbers are, that you just paid for a four foot of extra fence that you're not gonna be able to use for pretty much anything. Yep. It's gonna sit around, get damaged. More than likely, the guys are just gonna throw it in the dumpster. Going to a new market, you better make dang sure that, that you're an actual salesman and not an order taker for one, and that you know your numbers, you know your costs, you know your overhead, you know what you're spending. Be prepared to pay for advertisement if you wanna scale the way we do. You could come down here and we could have done, you know, ran one crew and and built a reputation over time and slowly scaled like most companies do mm -hmm. to where we're at over the course of probably five years. And but over the course of that five years, you know, there's there's drawbacks to scaling that slow as well. You lose a lot of profit um, just because everything's so drawn out. You know, when you've got one manager managing one 
one crew if there's not enough pieces of the pie left when it's over. If your job is to manage a fence company, then it needs to be. Yeah, it needs to be split up. And, yeah. You know, we've got we've got plans to add other overhead positions, and you can't add those. You know, you can't have a professional fence company that does all the things that we do without having the proper people in place to keep everything organized. That's right. If you don't spend money on that, then you're never going to scale past a million dollars. And to be honest with you, if, you, if you're not spending money on that, you get to a million dollars. You're probably getting ready to file bankruptcy because you're you're not watching your numbers and you're not following up and not doing the things you're supposed to do. First year we hit a million. I did it uh, with a laptop and a lazy boy. Didn't even have a desk. Yeah. Yeah. We, we used all of our income and we put that into um, outlandish advertising, which uh, there, there's three types of advertising that I believe in and that our partners believe in. Number one, what I think is most effective is outlandish advertisement. So chrome wrapped trucks, chrome fence signs, anything that gets people's attention daily because it's a one-time investment. So you make it and then it's gonna constantly return. Your truck's driving down the road um, people see it and, and you get a phone call. We get so many phone calls off our trucks. People call in and say, hey, you know, I seen your truck driving down the road. I'd like for you guys to build our fence. Like that chrome truck qualifies us to build a fence. Well, it just makes people look. Yeah, it does. It gets yeah, if it was just a, like just a, like our trucks driving down the road, Yeah, it's all, you it's don't all look. part of branding. I, yeah. I had a conversation or a meeting with our team back a couple weeks ago and told them, that branding is extremely important because you can get a dollar ninety nine cup of coffee at a gas station, or a six dollar and ninety nine cent cup of coffee at Starbucks, and the people that bought it at Starbucks are happier. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still just coffee. We have a little bit of other mixes in there, but it's the same thing. Uh, my my wife and uh, Elizabeth, our media girl, they like nice coach purses or Michael Michael Kors purses or whatever. It's just a purse. Still just packing your stuff around. You're paying the name, yeah. you're paying for the branding. So when you build your company, if you focus on those things and you put money behind those things, then something that you had out there, it could be a pen, it could be a hat, it could be a, a truck, it could be a fence sign. People are going to see it and then subconsciously remember that. Yeah. And it could be six months from now, they're thinking about, well, I need a fence for my yard or for my mom's yard. Then that's, that's the first name that pops in their head. So branding doesn't always have to have an immediate effect, it can have a long term effect too. Yeah. So it started out with, with Google. Um, we started out with Scott from the Fence Marketing Team. If you guys haven't checked him out or touched base with him, he does an awesome job. Um, we enjoyed working with him. But we've evolved past that. Google was great for us starting out. It's got, it got us in contact with a lot of commercial contractors and stuff like that. But what, what we've noticed as we developed, we hired somebody into a media position and her job is she goes around every day and takes pictures of projects that have been completed. And then she posts two pictures every day to social media across all platforms. Um, and then once a day I'll go in there and, and I'll boost one post that I like. And that way we're consistently advertising directly to the, the public. So, and timing is important with those too. So, what? Yeah. What, if uh, you would ask me a year ago, I was a, I was an advocate for Google, but knowing what I know now, and if you use Facebook correctly, it, it works two to one on generating leads. But the things about about Facebook is Facebook looks for consistency. That's why we post every day at six a.m. and six p.m. Uh, and then they also look for consistency on your advertising. They, Facebook promotes the people that could constantly spend money um, to make sure they get results. They're, they're not going to push you to the, the top of the stack whenever you dump three or four hundred dollars on one ad once every two months. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're consistently, if you've got a budget, say it's a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month and you're spending fifty dollars a day on ads and you're promoting different projects every day, then if you were doing fifty dollars a month at any given point, that means you're going to have fourteen ads running at the same time over the period of that month, fourteen to sixteen. Uh, and people are going to consistently see your product. They're consistently going to see different types of product: you know, chain link vinyl, wood, uh, residential, commercial jobs, uh, things like that. So then you've got brand recognition. 
Yeah, and that's what it, that's why I, one of the main reasons I decided to start doing that was because even if those people aren't buying a fence from us now, uh, six months from now, they're they're going to remember seeing Mr. Fence and all this awesome work that we do. Yep. So that was the first in five episodes, and hopefully you like what you're seeing. In the next episode, what we'll talk about is we'll talk about communication, organization, and take a tour of Josh's home office so you can see how humble the beginnings were. So stay tuned for that. If you like what you're saying, hit that subscribe and that like. Um, drop us a comment. If there's something that you want to see in an upcoming episode or you have an idea for an upcoming episode, be sure to mention that in the comments down below. We're always looking for ideas of things that you guys find value in. So until next time, you have a good dang day.